Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video for watercolor is going to go over different tools that can be used with masking fluid. And I have a variety of uh, tools laid out in front of you that uh, can be used with masking fluid and I'll just kind of talk about them uh, kind of quickly. I do have a couple videos that go over uh, applying masking fluid and also using masking tape as a mask instead of masking fluid. So this video is just going to talk about some of the tools, some of them that I uh, use uh, quite a bit and some that I either don't use anymore or only use a little bit here and there. So I tend to use uh, Colorless Art Masking Fluid by Winsor Newton and uh, you want to make sure that it uh, doesn't say that it's permanent. And uh, this one is uh, kind of off-white. And it doesn't, so it doesn't really have any color to it. It will dry just a little creamy once it's dry so that uh, you can see it, but it's um, not uh, really colorful. And then this uh, brand is the PBO Drawing Gum. And there is actually a newer version of this that has a darker label. And that is the one that I would look for if you're going to try this one because uh, this is actually, it's got a blue uh, tint to it and it's probably easier to see on the edge here. Um, it can actually stain your paper, this older version. So I think they made a newer version that uh, it, I guess is not supposed to stain your paper. So I still have some left and so I'll, I'll just use this up. And uh, so it's the same thing, even though it says drawing gum, it is masking fluid. And so those are the two uh, brands that I use, although there is a different brand in one of these pens. I do have, uh, I think some by Daniel Smith, and then I know there are, there's like a dozen or more different brands of masking fluid that you can get. Um, there's some with color in them, there's some without, and there is a, a little difference in um, the liquid liquidity of the mask. So PBO is a little thinner than the Winsor Newton and then different brands might have um, a little variety to that. Um, so as far as the tools, I used to apply mask with a craft brush, an old craft brush. And so this is one that I've just kept in my uh, brushes just to show people um, what I used to use. And there is a method that you can take a small container of uh, liquid dish or water with a drip of liquid dish soap in it. And then you would dip your brush in that, kind of coat it with the dish soap water mix and then put it in uh, your masking fluid, whatever you're using, because the dish soap is supposed to help keep uh, the bristles from kind of getting stuck together with the masking fluid. And uh, for me, that's just a method that I don't care to use anymore. Um, generally what will happen with a brush, and so you never want to use your good brushes, is that the masking fluid being a um, liquid latex will eventually kind of gum up the bristles and make them stick together. And so uh, I do know some artists that will buy lots of kind of throwaway brushes that they will use for masking fluid. So that is one option. Uh, another option is that uh, are very um, popular are things like these and these are color or clay shapers and it will say it on the side let's see that one says color shaper and they all have rubber tr rubber tips 
So uh, depending on which one you would purchase, you can get a variety of uh, shapes and some have some points to them, some are rounded, and uh, this one is quite a bit bigger. So these work well because the masking fluid doesn't tend to stick to uh, the tip of the uh, color or clay shaper. And uh, when you look up color, it is actually uh, the uh, English version, C-O-L-O-U-R. And uh, so these can be found uh, something similar also in craft stores, but generally you can find them in uh, your art store or uh, online. So color or clay shapers, and they work well. A few of these I will demonstrate in a few minutes. Um, then my favorite tool, at least right now and over the years, has been an hors d'oeuvre pick, which is plastic, taped to a pencil. And I usually leave the um, end of it sticking up about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch off the end of the pencil. And that gives me room to dip it into the container. And because it is plastic and has a little bit of an arrowhead to it, uh, it will hold uh, the masking fluid and also gives me a smaller tip so that I can do uh, smaller lines with it. Now this is definitely an unconventional uh, tool and others have uh, used things like this, uh, sticks, toothpicks, that kind of thing. And it's just one that I um, have figured out how I like to use it. And so uh, that's my own invention. Um, there are tools like this, and this is a uh, ruling pen, and it generally is used with ink. It's metal. It has a little uh, rotated uh, um, screw over here that you can make the tip go wider or narrower. And then this particular one has um, the one side that will flip down and then it makes it really easy to clean. Um, some of these are better than others. And this is one I think I got on Amazon and it was um, not very expensive, but they also noted it as uh, being for masking fluid. So um, you might look up ruling pin and uh, if you're interested in that. Now, this is one I'm still trying to figure out. I have not used it very much. It can give you narrow lines because of how wide or thin you can make that, but you do have to have the uh, right uh, kind of mask or the right, uh, uh, what do I want to say, thickness of mask. It needs to be thin enough that it will flow through here without an issue. So um, that one is one I'm still working with. This is a uh, dip pin and they come with, or you can purchase um, metal tips that you can put on the pin or the, the handle. And these uh, tips can come in different sizes and different shapes, but basically it's kind of the same thing as uh, the ruling pin. It uh, holds the mask well enough that you can uh, go ahead and um, get thin lines with it. Um, I have only just started playing with this. I've seen other artists that use it. And uh, so I'm kind of new to, to this one as well. This is also one where you want your mask um, to be thinner. And then these guys are uh, newer on the market, I would say in the last maybe three years, maybe four years. Um, I think I saw PBO come out with theirs first, and this is a PBO masking fluid marker, and it uh, says drawing gum on it, and this one is the 0.7. They have one that is actually wider, um, but this one's tip is, you can kind of see it here, this is the little plastic tip. And this is actually the replacement tip. It comes with a tip also in there. But when I first was using this, uh, it got gummed up. And so this is kind of acting as my stopper now. So it just kind of keeps some of the air out. And then when I actually go to use it, I put this tip in there. These, uh, this one can be a little harder to clean. You need to make sure you get in there and clean it pretty quickly. And uh, all of the masking fluid is in the pin itself. And then this one is by Holbein and it is uh, just says masking fluid W479 on it. And this one has 
a metal tip, uh, which allows the mask to flow out of there. And then you have to squeeze in the center right here to kind of get it started. Um, and so I'll, sh I'll show you a couple of, uh, I may show you both of those, but uh, actually I'll probably just show this one because the other one's a little hard to get going. Um, this is a toothbrush, as you can see. And uh, masking fluid can be used with a toothbrush to spatter the mask. And so um, I have two of these in, in my brush uh, holder and they do get a little gummed up. So as soon as you're done using it, you need to go and get it under some warm water and clean it out as best you can. Um, this one has some farther down into the bristles. So over time, at some point, this one may not be uh, that good anymore, but the bristles being plastic, it you can really kind of get in there and scrub at it and pull that mask out of there. I guess I wasn't uh, too careful last time. And then this last uh, item is a uh, sea sponge. Now a sea sponge, if you use it with mask, and you can see I did on this side, it will gum it up and stick it together. So um, you just have to be aware that if you're going to use uh, masking fluid with it, that um, it may not survive and you may just have to toss it when you're done with it. So the reason that I would use a sea sponge is um, you can get very natural looking um, marks on the paper. And the way I would do it is wet it, dip it in some mask, and then uh, you can dab it on your paper. And I've used it with snow. Um, I've used it with light areas in, in foliage, that kind of thing where you want it to look like there may be leaves or something like that on the paper. And so um, I will move these over and just show you a few things. Uh, earlier, I was playing with the dip pen and I did take a little bit of the PBO masking fluid and I just spritzed some of my water from a water bottle into the PBO so that it's just even a little thinner than it might be normally. You have to be careful because if you make it too thin then it just may not work to block um, the paint. So then I used it with a dip pen and uh, I left some circles. I'll go ahead and zoom in right quick. So I left some circles on the paper with the masking fluid or marked some circles on there. Let me close this right quick so it won't dry out. And you do need to be careful with mask. If you're new to it, you don't want to leave it open for very long. So I tend to pour some mask into a smaller container. These happen to be film canisters. The Fuji film canisters, and you can still find them online, are very good for um, keeping the uh, air out of and off of the masking fluid. So then um, once it's dry, you can put paint on it and you want to wait till your mask is completely dry. And then this is a rubber cement pickup tool. And it's just a rubbery um, tool that you can use that will lift mask. And so this was the dip pen that I was trying. And I also did some lines down here for some grass marks. So that worked pretty well and they're they're nice and thin. Um, so then just as a quick demonstration, basically I dipped the pin into the fluid and I did have to give it a little bit of pressure at the tip to spread. There's a little um, break in the metal at the very tip so that it will spread um, and then you can get the, usually it's ink. Sometimes it's um, things like some paint or something like that you could use with a dip pen. So uh, basically um, you can get very nice thin lines with a dip pen. And this will be something that I will be exploring some more because uh, there are often situations, the paintings I'm doing, where I uh, want to uh, have something nice and thin and small like that. Um, this uh, little glob or ball is actually rubber of the, uh, not rubber cement, the masking fluid that I have picked up off of painting. So if you don't have a, a um, rubber cement pickup tool, you can use the mask that you take off of paintings and slowly build it up and create your own um, little tool to erase with. And it's also very handy to clean tools with. And uh, so 
it's just something that I have around. And then when it gets big enough, then I usually toss them and start a new one. The other thing that you can use is a paper towel if you want to make sure that your tool is completely cleaned off. And I'm not sure if I've gotten it down in between the grooves. So I don't know if you can tell, but there is just a little bit of um, an opening down here. And so I would want to make sure that that's pretty clean before I would um, put it away. Now, because this is metal, it would be easier to clean than some of the other um, tools like the paintbrush. Okay, so let's see. Let me get a bigger piece of paper. Okay, and then um, I'll use the toothbrush and I will have to pause and go clean this right quick, but I'll use the PBO again so you can see it. And you do have to be very careful with a uh, toothbrush and masking fluid because if you're flicking it, um, basically it can get all over the place. So uh, generally I will put down uh, cloth, um, it, paper towels or um, paper around my area so that I'm not getting masking fluid everywhere. So I will clean this uh, right quick in the sink and I'll be right back. All right, I have, uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and show you my tool, which is the um, hors d'oeuvre pick. So basically you can see it's holding the mask and I can get thicker lines. I can come up on it a little bit and get thinner lines. And then I can also use it to fill in. And it has a little bit of a give at the tip. It's um, a little, yeah, it'll just kind of move and go where I want it. Um, so it, it, I find it works really well. And then either I can use my little masking fluid ball to clean it, or I could use a paper towel. And uh, it just comes right off and it's not a, not a problem to clean. Um, then the, uh, sorry, brain. <laughs> uh, then the ruling pen is uh, same kind of thing. So I'm going to dip it in to the mask and you can see you can get some nice thin lines with it. And then I can spread it out. So it's, whoops, I'm going the opposite way spread it out so that it's wider and will give me a thicker line. Let's see how wide I can go with it. Get a little more on there. And then I can get even thicker with it. Now this is using the PBO that I put into uh, a container and added some water to it. So I thinned the PBO down um, and that seems to be working pretty well with the dip pin. I had used it previously with a painting and I was trying it out and I was having a little bit of a problem getting the PBO to, um, or whatever mask I was using at the time, to release um, out of the tip. So I think the trick is that I just did not have enough water in um, the mix. And again, like I said, you need to be careful you don't over put too much water in the mask. Um, because then what happens is it just kind of spreads and it won't attach to your paper well and form a, um, basically a cover over, um, the paper. Then, uh, just a couple of these. So these are the, um, uh, color or clay shapers and it has, oops, this one has a smaller tip. Now I haven't used this one in a while but you can also lay it on its side and kind of fill in. And when I'm using masking fluid, I'm not trying to make it as thin as I can. I'm fine if it is thicker because, um, or it has a little bit of a bead to it like this area right in here, uh, because then it, I know that it's covered the paper. And so I just give it enough time to dry. And usually the mask will go just a little darker than it was when you uh, applied it. So there's a nice thick line with that one, but I could also come up on the edge of it and get thinner lines with it if I needed to. Okay. And then I will show you, um, did I do the dip pen? Oh, I showed the dip pen over here. That's right. 
move these down just a touch. Okay, and then uh, the last one would be one of these guys. Um, since the Holbein one is easier to get started, I'll go ahead and use that. And uh, the uh, PBO one, you actually have to, once I would put this uh, tip in there, I would have to press down on it. So it's one of those that you press a couple times and push the tip in for it to get the mask uh, to start flowing and it's a process. So instead of taking up time doing that, I will get this one going. And sometimes it starts pretty quickly and other times it is a little harder. And the only problem I find with these is that one um, PBO one is harder to uh, clean up and get going and this one sometimes I cannot get and I don't know if it's I think the tip is clean I cannot get it to flow so I may not be able to show you and this one comes out it almost looks black when it's dry very dark gray well maybe I have a clog so um, that would be something that I would have to deal with and I'm not going to do that right now, but um, they are, they're interesting to try, but I think some of these other options might, might be better. All right. Um, so I think what I will do here in just a second is uh, I'll let this dry and I'll be right back and I'll show you what it looks like uh, with some watercolor over it. Uh, and then I'll remove the mask so you can see what those shapes look like. And, um, yeah, I'll be right back. I could hear you guys yelling at me, you forgot the sponge. So I uh, stopped drying and I'm going to show the sponge right quick. So I have, um, I have the sponge wet now and uh, this is one the one that was already start, starting to get messed up on that side. So normally I would pour this out into a well, I guess I will. It'll be easier. Have a little glass uh, lid from an old canning jar here, and I'll just pour touch out. And then I'll just kind of get some mask on there and dab it off on the side because I won't need that much and then you can apply it and it is very helpful when you're doing the spritzing of mask or you're using the sponge with the mask to actually have mask that has color in it whether you add a little bit of paint or where, whether you're using the PBO um, or another mask with some color because it's easier to tell where you're applying it um, because it can be very fine and so having um, some color helps with that. So now I will pause. I'll make sure that's dry before I come back and I'll put some color on it and I'll go take care of the sponge. I have uh, the paper dry and you can use a blow dryer with masking fluid, but uh, I usually uh, will move the blow dryer around rather than just hold it there. And I also don't get, I maybe get, oh, eight, 10 inches away from it. I don't want it too close because the heat is not good to um, overheat masking fluid because it can stick it to your paper. But I do use a blow dryer with it regularly and it's not a problem. So just so you can see, the sponge did clean up some, but it is a little stuck together in the center. And one of the things that you can do, which I didn't think about before, is that you can use a little bit of the dish soap uh, with some water and you could dip your sponge in that first and then dip it into the masking fluid. So uh, if you do that, you would want to wring it out just a little bit um, before, whether you're putting it in clear water or in a solution with a little bit of dish soap. And it would just be a drop of dish soap and maybe a quarter cup to a half a cup of water. And uh, then that might help keep the, the uh, sea sponge from sticking together so quickly. So um, now I'm going to put a little bit of paint on and I will just grab my big brush 
And I do have some color on my palette that's sitting there from what I was doing the other day. So I'm just going to kind of wake it up a little bit. This is sap green. And I'll just play here a little bit. And this is cobalt. And come over and get some of the new gamboge. It's kind of fun to do these kinds of things every now and then just to not worry about what you're painting, but just kind of play with the color. And then this is uh, Quinn Rose. All right. And I feel like I need to just because I'm going to tap and see if I can get some color in here. There we go. Okay. I'm done playing. Uh, so now I'm going to dry this and then I'll come back and lift the mask so you can see um, how those different uh, masked areas worked. Oh, and let me put just a little color on the dip pen area up here. Let's see, I'll grab purple since I haven't used purple. All right, and that is Carbazole Violet. It's a beautiful purple. All right, so I will dry these and I'll be right back. So I have dried the both areas and one of the things that you want to be careful of is that before you remove masking fluid, you want to make sure that your paper is dry. If it feels cool to the touch, uh, if it's got a little bit of coolness to it, that means that it is not quite dry, even if it looks flat and looks like it's dry. So I would either use a blow dryer or give it a little more time. Because if you go to remove mask and the paper is still somewhat uh, wet or damp, it can tear the paper. So uh, I will go ahead and lift the mask off of the area up here. That was the dip pen again. So both of those are dip pen and uh, got really nice uh, thin lines with that. And then this is the toothbrush where I spritzed the mask. And so you can see the spray there. This was my hors d'oeuvre pick. Okay, this is the area that I used the ruling pen and got some thick and thinner lines in there. This is uh, where I used the color and clay shapers, a variety of them. And then this last area is the sea sponge with the mask on it. So you can see you get a very organic looking shape, very um, textural with the sea sponge. And so I'll pull those a little more space there. Okay, so I have the dip pen. This was the color and clay shapers. I have where to go toothbrush and the sea sponge, the ruling pen, and my hors d'oeuvre pick. And then again, this didn't, I couldn't get it going. So um, it, I didn't use it. And I also did not uh, use the uh, paintbrush method. So I'm sure there are probably other places, resources that you can find information about using a craft brush to apply masking fluid. Um, so I'm not going to go into that one today. And uh, so you can see there's a variety of tools they can make a variety of marks and both thick and thin and uh, very interesting textures as well. And uh, I find masking fluid very helpful when I'm working on a watercolor. And I hope you'll uh, give some of these a try. And if you have a tip trick or technique that you would like to see with watercolor, please leave a comment below and I will add that to my list. 
and I will uh, list uh, the other two videos that I've done with masking fluid, uh, link them in the description below. So I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.